All right, all right, all right. Well, welcome back to our podcast, Good News for Those Who Struggle. My name's Casey. I could serve as one of the pastors at the Avenue Church, and uh, it's a delight today uh, to be joined by our guest, Logan Poyer. Uh, I am going to, oh my goodness, Logan, already a fan favorite. I mean, just your presence. Did you hear those applause? <laughs> Can we get them again? I mean... Wow. Hey, look at that. Wow. That's All right. Big. That's big. So Logan, I, I am gonna I'm gonna let you introduce yourself and you're gonna you're gonna tell us lots of things about your family, about the fact that you're a church planter and your church and all those sort of things. But um, the guest who was on here before, uh, one of them was Sam Powers. He's a he's a pastor at the Avenue Church, and he said that I should warm you up with a question. So before we get to anything of like substance Here's your warm-up question, and this was, again, from, from Sam. Uh, fantasy football. If you could have one pick in the upcoming draft, fantasy football, who's your number one pick? Oh, man. Uh, there's a lot of context that, that really would go into this. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, is it a tight end premium league? Is it yeah. a super flex? I can see you're already getting warmed up. <clears throat> you're working. You know what I mean? This question. Um, but I think overall... Uh, the name that I would go with is Travis Etienne. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's it. Solid pick. Solid pick. Do you right? feel feel warmed up and ready to go? I feel warmed up, Great. ready to go. I love it. I love it. Well, for listeners out there who are going to be in fantasy football, uh, that's a little um, you know <laughs> yeah, right. extra for you. And if you have no idea what we're talking about, um, that's okay. That's cool too. Um, it's uh, it's all good. Hey, so Logan, let's hear about your family, and then let's hear a little bit about um, the church plant that uh, that you've got going. Yeah, so I um, will have been married for six years in about four days, I think. Wow, I think my crowd, math is correct. I think the crowd loves that, too. <laughs> right. A little love for Kirsten. Yep, Kirsten um, has endured me for six years mm -hmm. um, in just a few days, which, uh, which is awesome. We're celebrating that. And our little girl, Quinn, is um, just turned two. Wow. So we have a two-year-old toddler who is um, wild. She is just nonstop, yeah. crazy running around yeah. always, uh, but also like the greatest thing ever. Wow. Um, so a lot of fun, you know, family stuff is, is a really cool season right now. How cool. Yeah. How cool. And um, beautiful family and love, love that, um, you know, we get to do family with you guys. And uh, so, so lots of support and love uh, to the Poyers. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you came to know the Lord and then how this church plant called Eleventh Element um, came to be. Yeah, so I was, you know, born and raised in a Christian family. Um, uh, you know, can't really remember a time where I wasn't going to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. uh, like regular rhythms from the beginning. Yeah. And um, I can remember middle school, uh, like seventh, eighth grade, uh, you know, just kind of continuing to to pray the prayer, mm -hmm. quote unquote, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because I wasn't sure if it stuck the time before. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so I would continue, you know, pray the prayer, pray the prayer, you know, maybe, man, what if God like was busy yeah. that last time, mm -hmm. you know? <clears throat> and, um, and then, uh, well, and the kind of the, um, the motivation for me was cause I didn't want to go to hell. No, no. <laughs> right. So, Let's get out so of there. make sure that the prayer is sticking yes. because hell sounds awful. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so then I, had, I remember having a conversation with my dad and, uh, and he kind of walked me through the, the truth of the gospel being mm -hmm. that, um, you know, when you, when you understand what Christ has done for you and you, and you ask him to, you, you give your life to him, mm -hmm. it's a one-time deal. Right. Um, right. and, uh, and so that kind of clicked and wow. I was like, all right. And, and kind of prayed that prayer, I guess, uh -huh. one more time, uh -huh. just like really submitting my life to Jesus and, uh. You know, there's been some ups and downs, sure. of course, throughout sure. the, um, the the last number of years. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, middle school, seventh, eighth grade, something like that. I had a, a really, you know, transformative middle school Bible teacher too. Let's talk a lot about who that was. Yeah, I mean, he man just mm -hmm. changed my life. I, you know, yep. so many things that I couldn't even right. remember to like super smart bring up right deeply now. Deeply spiritual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, big time. What was his, what was his name again? Man, the crowd likes that. So, 
So transformative. I forget his name. No. Oh, my god! It was Casey. All right. Casey Cleveland. How about that? How about that? <laughs> They're laughing at that, too. <laughs> nice. Nice, Frankie. Uh, so, yeah. And then, so the church plant. Um, so, gosh, two years ago, I guess it was now, uh, I felt the Lord, right about two years, I felt the Lord, um, <laughs> yeah, it was like right before Quinn. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. really, you know, crazy time of life where right. we're about to have our first baby. Yeah. And God's like, hey, I got something for you. Um want you to leave your like comfortable mm-hmm, ministry mm-hmm, context mm-hmm. and get into something uh, that you don't even really know what you're doing, Yeah, uh, which was, uh, long story short, planting a, a church inside of a CrossFit gym. And the vision was never, has never been to just do one, mm-hmm. uh, but man, what would it look like if we just continued to plant these uh, I like to call them gospel outposts mm-hmm. in fitness centers where you're combining the importance of physical and spiritual health. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're essentially bringing the church to the people mm-hmm. as opposed to always trying to get people to come to the church. Wow. Um, Love that. So it's like, it's kind of cool. It's like a, uh, it's like a smaller, um, less expensive, more agile uh, I, I love the agile, the word agile, like, mm-hmm. man, we can just like maneuver so right. easily. Right. Um, but we're still a church, you yeah. know, and, and there's discussions on ecclesial minimums and sure. things that are hard to even understand. But, but man, like we're, we're getting to share the gospel with lost people yeah. every week. Yeah. And it's led to, you know, all kinds of different, uh, small groups and Bible studies and, and DNAs mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, getting into the recovery community a little bit mm-hmm. and, trying to incorporate then recovery and spiritual and physical health, yeah. like a triangle almost. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's been, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, definitely had no idea what I was doing, just followed the Lord. And, and again, I had this, I had this kind of, um, crazy, uh, like mentor type person in my life who, who told me one time, um, man, just like figure out what God's doing. Mm and like get on board, mm-hmm. you know, like get on that train. Yes. Um, and if you haven't caught it, that, that also was, was Casey. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have, it's been a joy, uh, bro, for sure. Um, to just, uh, be able to be along, uh, for the journey. And, um, I think, I think crazy is an appropriate, uh, oh, uh, adjective that goes with me. And so I'm just, man, it's so cool to see, um, just a couple things. First of all, the, you know how the scriptures talk about the the blessing of generation to generation and just like knowing your mom and dad mm. and then knowing like the blessing of Spanish River Church, which is, the, you know, a church that has helped to send both of us. And then now getting to be just a, a you know, a small part of, of some of those chapters, you know, um, and, you know, I don't count it small. I count it a privilege. So I don't know if that's the right word, but just seeing the, the generational blessing now, like and the gospel fruit that's creatively being born in and through you, man, such a gift, such a gift. So mm-hmm. thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. And, um, you know, just, just to honor that, yeah, I, I did, I did bring the right <laughs> headgear. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm now putting on an 11th element. There it hat. is. There okay. It's right there. I so was wondering. We, we are supporting yes. um, Logan in, in all. In more ways than one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, so Logan, um, today's sh- uh, show is really going to be about uh, sort of like everyday mental health for everyone. We've done different shows where we've done uh, more of a deep dive, maybe on like addiction or core healing um, or, 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 you know, just, just kind of um, some of the, the real valleys uh, that go along with uh, mental health. And um, today, I mean, I just want to walk through uh, some stuff that you are doing um, that, that might pertain to anyone and everyone, no matter where they fall on, on sort of the, the mental health line, if you will. And um, just kind of explore, you know, um, the effectiveness of that and uh, what that has looked like for you because you are a dad, you are a husband, you are um, an entrepreneur, you are um, involved, obviously, in your church and you're a son, you're a friend, you know, you have a lot of dynamics that are happening right now that, you know, um, you know, potentially many of our listeners can relate to. It's kind of like life's happening at 87 miles an hour. And <laughs> how, how is it, 
that um, we might be able to, uh, you know, maintain a level of thriving mental health and really pay attention to that. And what are some of the rhythms that go into that? And so um, in order to kind of like walk us through a conversation um, about this, uh, I, I have an article here from Ryan Duncan, um, and this is connected with crosswalk.com. Don't know a ton about him or the or the website, but but I was connected to the the title, 10 Ways Christians Can Improve Their Mental Health. And then I, you know, you know looked, looked through it, and it seemed like, man, this would be a great conversation. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll go through all 10, and I just want to ask you, like, hey, is this something that's part of your normal rhythm? And how do you think it, you know, supports mental health? Um, and because if we're, if, we're, if we're called to be disciples of Christ, that, that means that Jesus changes everything, and, and we, we continue to center our lives on Christ. And, and you know, that's, that's really the, the beginning and, and the end of mental health is, is being centered on Christ continually. And, and so, you know, I um, just want to like talk through if some of these things are happening in your, in your journey and how you think they, they, they help with mental health. And the first one is prayer. First uh, John 5, uh, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so prayer, um, what does prayer look like? In your normal rhythms and, and how do you think it's had an effect on on helping your your mental health hmm. yeah so uh i mean i can't i'm not going to say oh i'm a pastor and ministry person and um and don't pray uh because i do but i also won't say that i pray maybe as much as i would like to mm-hmm. um okay. but yeah so as, as far as the the regular rhythms of prayer there's there's meals there's mm-hmm before bedtime with mm-hmm. Quinn and, mm-hmm. um, and, and things like that. Sometimes spent in prayer with, with my wife as well. Um, but as far as, as far as mental health and, and maintaining that aspect of prayer, um, just the, like the quiet hmm. time with the Lord, mm-hmm. um, me as an introvert, uh, I definitely like the quiet to, yeah. to recharge, sure. um, like, kind of emotionally, but, but I think also spiritually a little bit too. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, having that, having that time set aside, maybe it's, maybe it's in the morning on the way to work, Mm -hmm. maybe it's on the way home, Mm -hmm. you know, before I get home and jump in with bath time and Mm -hmm. and bedtime. But, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just that, that like intentional quiet time where it's just me and Jesus, Mm. um, is, is crucial. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'll say this too, like, uh, I was in my DNA um, recently. I, I was sharing that I felt as though I was lacking that. Okay. And mm. and I could feel it. Wow. Wow. Like man, I, like my my I guess spirit is is hungry huh. for wow. that. You know. Wow. And um, and so I, I don't know. I, I guess that's that speaks to mental health, but but also just the the idea of continuing to be in and with Jesus abiding. Yeah. Um, there's an adverse side to that where if we, if we fail to do so, there's your spirit longs and thirsts and hungers for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so I uh, love the fact that you shared that this is kind of something that happens when I don't do it. Like I, f- I feel it, I know. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think there's definitely, um, the, the, uh, just the stopping, of our day, even if we're doing it on the way somewhere, you know, or, you know, like I'm, I'm big prayer walker guy. So even, even if like there's, there's movement, there's, it's still almost like a mini Sabbath right in the middle of our Mm -hmm. day. And, you know, Sabbath brings refreshment. And so I think that it's almost like a restart, you know, and I, and you know, that's, it's, it's, um, appreciated to hear that it's something that, can happen. It doesn't have to be, you know, like as Sam shared this, this weekend when he preached, you know, sentence prayers mm-hmm. work and are helpful and things like that. And so in the, in the midst of our, our, the pace of our life to begin to incorporate prayer, um, you know, at some of those moments and even transition moments, yeah. which you mentioned. But yeah. it's, it's hard because, uh, like a lot of times I think, I think at least I'll speak for myself. I, I feel like I need to set aside a big chunk mm-hmm. of time mm-hmm to get the, all that prayer in. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and if I don't have that time, well, shoot, I'm going to push it aside, mm-hmm. you know, and just not engage in any prayer mm-hmm. because I don't have the 20 minutes, right. You know, right. or the 30 minutes or whatever, like, yep. um, because 
because I know sometimes when I start to pray, like, man, I just want to keep going and I got a big mm -hmm. list and mm -hmm. I want to like, pray mm -hmm. for all these people and things. And right. um, so that's a struggle a little bit as well. But, um, you know, it's perf like the sentence prayers, man, like yeah. getting in those those rhythms yeah. and habits. Absolutely. Are, are, are key. Well, I think it's like an appetite, right? Like the more you um, engage in the activity, the, the greater your desire will be. Mm -hmm. And um, so I do think it, it's in Jesus models this, that it is important to have times away set aside that are more than just the sentence prayers. I think that's healthy and all those sort of things. But I also think what's important is to be careful of like a defeatist mentality, which is like, oh, well, you know, this mm -hmm. is all I had for today. So I'm just going to like move away from it rather than like maybe asking the Lord to give you, you know, new vision to where that, where that can come at, even in the midst of sort of these, these bite-sized prayers. Yep. Um, for sure. And, and by the way, just, just to remind all of our listeners out there and you too, Logan, this, this podcast is called good news for those who struggle. So <laughs> as you share your struggle, that's celebrated. So thank you. Good. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I think that's good to hear. And the second thing with prayers, you know, prayer just like actively changes things that we're promised to that. And so there's shifts that can be made in prayer that are, um, not made outside of prayer because, you know, James tells us you don't have because you don't ask. So I think there's, you know, as we struggle with these mental health things, those are, those are, those are real entities. The second one that they suggest is journal. Um, Esther, on the night that the king could not sleep and he gave orders to bring the book of memorable deeds, the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it just references how putting pen to paper um, can often help liberate your feelings, uh, your inner feelings, quote, unquote. So thoughts on journaling? Have you done it in the past? Do you do it? Is it helpful? What do you think? Mm. Um, so I love myself a good, like, paper journal. Okay. Dude, putting pen to paper is therapeutic. Old school. For you're me. Not, you're yes. not typing it out. Well, yet. see, it's funny because I also love technology, and, like, Apple Pencil is, like, the coolest thing ever. Okay. Okay. Um, but I think that's more like, that's just more like a novelty, okay. like, um, attraction to the Apple pencil, but man, mm, right. like, like when it comes to like, like therapy mm. and healthy rhythms, mm -hmm. putting pen to paper is like, it's just so, mm. I love it, mm. you know? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, journaling, journaling is huge and, and journaling through, I like, I like to journal through prayers. So mm. like, um, like just writing out my prayer. Mm hmm pen to paper is like a really therapeutic and, and I would say mental health, um, helper for me, mm. you know? Um, but also just journaling through life, you know, a little bit of like, Hey, like this was a big deal in mm -hmm. my life. And I, I found some old, you know, uh, journals and notebooks from years and years ago. And mm. it's kind of, it's, I mean, it's funny. You see some of the things that, right. Um, that you used to worry about, right. <laughs> you know, you're right. like, Oh man, yeah. Life is so much different. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I am a, a big fan of, of journaling and pen to paper and, uh, I mean, not to knock the technology, but yeah. old school is, yeah. Love it. Well, I mean, it, it seems as though, um, there's like a slower pace at which you process thoughts when you have to write them down. I guess it depends on how fast you type, but, <laughs> right. but there's something about like, you know, you're, you're almost like carving it into the paper Yeah, and, and it's almost like a, even, even like a finality, mm. you know, there's like an authority. I can remember my dad saying, you know, be careful what you put in writing because that's like, it's forever. And, and but, but on the, you know, on the, positive side like I, it's it like almost slows your process I think a little bit and it, it, a bit more med meditative than just like the quick like you yeah. know bite-sized thought well I, and I, I I guess the more that technology we have nowadays we're we're tapping with our thumbs mm -hmm. we're typing with our fingers mm -hmm. and so there's even less of a um there's you're not writing as right. much right and um yeah, so so to get back, and you got to get yourself a good pen too. Yeah, it matters. It yeah. does. It yeah. really does. And and good paper. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, you for can't sure. just get like yeah, like a sweet leather like, notebook. Or yeah, something like that. you can't yeah. get like the yeah. yeah. So moleskin. You ever yeah, heard of moleskin? I have. Get yourself a moleskin. I have. And a sharpie pen. Putting that out there for for the for the world. Yeah, and, and you're good to go. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Yep. And don't let anybody else use your pen. 
Right. Uh, well, maybe, but <laughs> right. Um, you know, keep it in your pocket. Yeah. Somebody asks, no, I don't have one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, the, the idea of, of the journal and then you can kind of go back to it mm-hmm. as well. Um, I think there's, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of qualities, um, I think that can be found in, in putting pen to paper. I've found, so I, I'm a journal, I journal, um, but I, I am electronic. I use Evernote and I title them and they've got, they're all saved and things like that. Um, but the thing I have uh, found where pen is, priority for me is when I read the scriptures. Mm. So I'll read and I'll then interact with the scriptures with my pen, circling words, parentheses, underlining, arrows, whatever, maybe even writing a word or two. And that to me has been, uh, I feel like both therapeutic and just like a cool way that the Lord speaks. Mm. Um, so yeah. All right. So, uh, idea number three here is, um, lean on your community, Galatians six, two through 12, share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. So talk to us a little bit about how you lean on your community, whatever that might look like, and then how that has helped, you know, just, uh, mental health. Uh, man, two things come to mind when I think of leaning on my community, uh, first is, is like my DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, what is or, that? Or What's the DNA? Sm- small group. Um, it's our discipleship group. Okay. Um, where there's four of us, we, we get together once a week. Uh, we share some, uh, some soaps, mm-hmm. some mm-hmm. scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got lots of cool, like acronyms. I know, right? Stuff, <laughs> so right? many. <laughs> DNA, MC, soap. soap yeah. yeah. Walk. If it's not an acronym, then it probably doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't do it. We yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that is where you know um, I have these close friendships that are able to speak into my life, and, mm. and I feel comfortable sharing things. Mm. And um, within those four, you know, maybe there's one or two that that I would lean into even more. Mm-hmm. You know, like have mm-hmm. an even closer relationship sure. with. Sure. Um, and. Uh, you know, you also get to speak into other people's lives, which, um, not to make much of, of like my <laughs> advice, but, um, but I think it's cool how you get to see that, uh, the interaction and the dynamics of, you know, these guys speaking to my, to, to me and me mm. speaking to them. And mm. that's just a really cool, like life in community type of thing. Yeah. Um, the other, the other piece that I think of, uh, is, uh, and this probably is going to be another one of your points, but uh, in the gym, mm-hmm. there's a community there, like right. a pretty strong, you know, tight knit community, and uh, and there's accountability, and there's like these mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. aspects of of life right. that kind of manifest themselves, mm-hmm. like in mm-hmm. and outside of the gym. Like, dude, where were you yesterday? Like, yeah. how come you know? Or or hey, like you look off today while you're right. trying to exercise like what's going on and then right. that leads to a whole nother thing you know yeah so uh i think you can you can end up building some pretty cool uh relationships and friendships around around exercise mm. and um stuff like that so yeah awesome and, and we will we will get there that that is on the list but um as far as leaning on your community and then as it pertains to mental health uh, two thoughts. I hope I can remember both. We're coming to mind <laughs> as you were speaking. Right. Um, you're as sick as your secrets, which is something that we explored in one of these podcasts mm. um, with uh, Aliza. And, um, and and so what you were sharing is, man, I don't I don't have to have secrets. Mm. I've got safe place to share those things. And um, and so just on the mental health side of things, I mean, these are all parts of discipleship, but. They, they also, like discipleship lends itself to, to good mental health as mm-hmm. well. And so hopefully you're beginning to see the, the, the tie in there. So um, that's something that can happen um, where, you're, where you're really sharing and there's, there's good mental health there. And secondly, um, is just kind of um, having a place to get out of your own head. Mm-hmm. So if you, if you actually listen and care about what I'm sharing and then give me feedback, that's a skill, but it, it's takes you out of the world that seems to be so pressing. And I think um, as, as we walk through mental health issues, one of the realities is we begin to like have this experience of like it's all crashing down on me now and it's never gonna quit. Hmm. But when you take a second to care about somebody else and to get out of your own way, it, it's almost like the sun shines in and reminds you that it's not always gonna be like this. Yeah. So. I think that's that's great, and you have those those things scheduled in, and and um, 
Awesome. Yeah, I mean, you can you can feel when when you're hanging on to something, right? right. Like like emotionally, spiritually, physically, right. me- mentally. I mean, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. like like you have to you have to have the the community, right. the outlet to right. be able to confess. I mean, scripture. That's why it's in the scripture. Absolutely. Confession is Absolutely. like a big deal. Right. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 So, um, for sure. And, and, you know, the Lord gives us those outlets. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, um, one of the, the great things about bearing each other's burdens is creating a, a safe place for confession and repentance and, right. and even forward movement. Um, number four is, uh, eat well and, uh, Proverbs 23, do not join those who drink too much wine or gorge themselves, uh, uh on meat. For drunkards and gluttons become poor, and drowsiness clothes them in rags. And so, can you talk to us a little bit about, like, just eating and and how that has an effect um, on your mental health? What does that look like for you? <laughs> so it's funny. My wife and I started counting our macros. Okay. You know what that means? No. <laughs> okay. Talk to us. So educate us. Uh, counting your macros, you you essentially track your your proteins. Okay. Your carbohydrates mm-hmm. and your fats. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So I, I guess you can track calories too, but that's more of a secondary thing. Right. So, uh, based on your body composition, weight, you know, fitness goals, health goals, whatever they'll, you know, you can come up with how much protein, carbohydrates and fats that you should eat during a day. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then you do the hard work of, okay, well like this, you know, meal consisted of all these things you track it there's sure. all these apps you can right. download whatever right um but we've been doing it for about two weeks um we had kind of done it before mm-hmm. hadn't done it for a while jump back in sure about two two and a half weeks and uh and while it is hard work like it it has it's made a difference like you can feel it i think physically but also um like a little bit mentally okay like you can you're a little bit sharper you're a little bit more on mm. You're probably getting better sleep at night, even okay. though you might not realize it. You right. know, thing, things like that um, play a play a big role. And and one of the one of the things that I've noticed, and has been one of the most difficult things is, you know, we have Quinn mm-hmm. is in the house, mm-hmm. and so we have tons of goldfish, goldfish everywhere, <laughs> multicolored and pretzels. Just or no, ju- just the regular, just the yellow. Yep, not extra cheese. Nope. Okay. Just go to Costco and okay. you can get massive bags. Oh, yeah. Of, yeah, wait till okay. she gets five and over those. But just, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> we I got, think it's we awesome. Got a couple years. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I just love to take handfuls of goldfish and just stuff my face with them. Your right? macros are going to go up. Well, so it, since we've been counting macros, I like I haven't done that. Yeah. You know, and and the other th- I love peanut butter pretzels. Like my oh, weakness. Oh, like the little sandwich. Like the actual peanut butter pretzels. Okay. Uh, Trader Joe's has the best oh, ones. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and well, now you're creating a stumbling block. I know, so <laughs> I know, because I, I think you're going to say don't stuff well, your no, face. No, no, you can, you can. Oh, okay. I used to stuff my face. Okay, but now I have to, <laughs> I have to count out. Okay, I get 15 peanut butter right? pretzels. Right. Okay, and that is it for my snack. Okay. Right. Um, so all that to say, like, uh, I think there is like extreme value and benefit to, uh, to like really watching what you're eating. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that I was until I started like counting macros Mm -hmm. and all that. And then I realized, oh, okay, maybe I wasn't actually, um, like being as careful as I thought I was with what I was eating. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it, again, it has played, it's played a big role over the last, I'll say three weeks. Sure. Um, in like seeing some pretty cool differences Mm -hmm. in, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the way we're feeling physically, mentally, emotionally, all that, you know, so it's a pretty cool. Absolutely, man. And and if you're, thanks for sharing that. And just that, that idea of, um, having a, having a, like a, a vision, um, even a a budget, if you will, for, it's not like you're not eating. It's just that you're, there's more moderation. There's more thought given to what you're doing. And, you know, if you're prone to struggle, uh, so let's just talk about that from mm-hmm. the mental health side of things. I mean, I, our bodies are the temple, right? And so we should be honoring the Lord in every moment uh, of, of every day. And whether that's enjoying something, you know, that is um, a bit sugary, but doing it in moderation, mm-hmm. or it's just the, the, the regular patterns of healthy eating all unto the Lord. But if you're back to the mental health side, if you're prone to struggle with depression, anxiety, addiction, man, 
and, and you're putting things into your body that are going to make that struggle harder than it already is, I mean, that, that right there is either going to increase or decrease uh, your mental health status. And, um, you know, so, and, you know, then, then just what you mentioned was the sharpness, the mental sharpness. Who wants to feel like, you know, fuzzy and fatigued all day? That's not going to help our mental health. Right. Um, I mean, there, you can, I, I don't think it's crazy. It doesn't take a lot to, like, look at the different food options we have mm. and see what, like, what's been over crazy processed and is, you know, very unnatural. Sure. <laughs> and then what is the natural food? Like, right. what, what have, what have we like created yeah. as food and what, what did God create as food? And, right. and man, I mean, that, I, I shouldn't be, it shouldn't come as a crazy surprise that like the things that are more natural and um, less produced are, better for you yeah so it's not that it's not the so it's not surprising like you said but what might be at least a bit um i don't know if eye-opening is the right word but to really think about okay this is how i'm experiencing life and i don't love how i'm experiencing life i i have to at some point begin to really evaluate what i'm putting into my system mm. and um you know of course believing the gospel and reading scripture and prayer all those sort of things but if i'm continuing to like feed this fuel that is going to work against um some of the areas i want to go and i'm and then i keep wondering why i feel this way you know i i think what you're sharing is is insightful like take an account of what's going in and um you know really then even begin to evaluate how are we feeling different mm -hmm. as as we've tried this for a week and journal about it in your moleskin with your sharpie pen unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable you man you just nailed <laughs> nailed a couple of them in right. one swoop that's awesome. All right, so um, we're to, we're to number four, Logan. And again, if you're hopping on midway, um, go back and listen to the whole thing, okay? Or or you, I'll just I'll fast forward you. It's <laughs> this is ten ways Christians can improve their mental health by Ryan Duncan of of uh, Crosswalk.com. And Logan, uh, we come to number five, and I'm not saying these are ordered or anything like that, but um, so this is uh, read your Bible and John 16. I've told you these things so that in me you have made me at peace. In this world, you will have trouble, uh, but take heart, I have overcome uh, the world. And so talk to us a little bit about what does reading your Bible look like for you? And then maybe think through how, how does it have a positive effect on your mental health? Mm. Uh, man, I, I want to like lump this in with some of the other ones we've already talked about a okay. little bit. Sure. Um, because when I'm reading the scripture, a lot of times I'm also kind of writing about what I'm reading. So mm. there's some journaling there. Okay. And most of the time there's also some prayer. Um, but, okay. uh, you know, like we're, we're doing some, some scripture reading for the DNA, the, right. the discipleship group. And, yep. um, you know, we're doing some, some reading for some of the other Bible studies that we've got going on. And, and so there's, there's kind of a, a rhythm of, of reading scripture f for certain um, I, I don't really want to call them this, but for certain programs mm -hmm. <laughs> or like events that are gatherings, yeah, gatherings that mm -hmm. are happening. Mm -hmm. But then, like the, I think it's different from like just personal scripture reading for right. yourself, right? Um, and as someone who is, uh, I guess, really involved in kind of leading some of those discussions on. Mm. Bible readings, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. to, to then supplement that with my personal reading. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that takes the back seat. Okay. Um, yep. but, uh, I guess that's not really the point. The point is, <laughs> the point is like when I do get to read the scripture for myself, mm -hmm. man, it's like, uh, as I journal through, I'll give an example, uh, the book of John mm -hmm. journal through the book of John, um, Crossway, I think it's Crossway. Is it Crossway that has those ESV journals? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. Dude, it's so good. You love, love those. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Um, so scripture on one side, journal on the other side. Mm -hmm. Just go through the, you know, the the whole mm. book of John, journaling out stuff. So I did that once, and then mm. and then went back through it again, like with someone else, and uh, finding new things or different things, different like expressions of what I saw, read, journaled um, in the same text. And yeah. I think that's true of of the living word of God mm -hmm. is that as we read it, um, it can be applied, uh, to our lives in our particular context and situations that we find ourselves in, in that moment. Mm -hmm. 
and different things can be revealed to us sure uh, as far as mental health mm-hmm. like physical health spiritual you know guidance mm-hmm. wisdom mm-hmm. um all that so uh yeah so so as far as as far as like me personally that that book of john journaling um uh there there has been some pretty cool like like i read this once yeah. got this out of it read yeah. it again got something totally different right right so so you're you're seeing god like actually speak to you yeah. in that which is always good for our mental health to right. be reminded of that i'm going to read um, just a little bit of what this article says here. It says, for starters, it helps us to know several, this is the benefits of reading your Bible, biblical figures also struggled with depression and anxiety. Job was so miserable, he cursed the day of his birth. A dejected Elijah actually went into the wilderness and begged God to kill him. Even Jesus knew how it felt to suffer, suffer mental anguish, Luke 22. Um, if you're feeling depressed, just know you're in good company. Um, so talk about you know just the idea of being able to identify with other biblical characters, maybe in some of your own struggles, is that helpful to you to know that you're not alone? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I was sharing with you or somebody else recently. Um, you know, I, I feel like sometimes my personal struggles will result in God, uh, not blessing my min- like, mm-hmm. I don't want to call it my ministry, but right. 11th element. Yeah, sure. Um, like, man, why would, why would God bless those efforts if I keep screwing up over here? Right. And then you look at the scripture. Yeah, and you see yeah. these guys that have like done some, you know, some of the the biggest biblical figures that have done some of the biggest things for the faith mm-hmm. of Christianity, mm-hmm. and have done some of the like worst things. Right. <laughs> you know, like, right, right. Um, like God's going to use who He wills to use. Yeah, and right. um, and that has been that has been huge for me. Mm. You know, continuing to to spend time in the scripture and realizing that it's like, man, okay. You know, and that that gets me out of my own head a little mm. bit. Um, it, it's not up. It's not up to me. It's mm-hmm. it, you know, I, I I try so hard to not talk about Eleventh Element as my ministry, mm-hmm. but then but then I put the the whole thing, the whole spin of like, well, if I'm screwing up, then right. the ministry is not going to succeed. Right. right. <laughs> well, it's right. not my ministry. Right. Like, so so when you go to the scriptures, you 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 have like ammunition to fight against a Logan centered. Yeah. approach to life right right and i mean it because it reminds you that this is about god and his grace and what he's what he's doing yeah and and that's that's good man and we don't it's hard to get mm. outside of like just personal time in the scriptures where god gets to speak i can speak that to you on a sunday but when god whispers that to you and you can capture it in like some sort of journal or something that you know i think that's powerful the other thing it says is um the bible teaches us that god gives us strength Isaiah 40 provides shelter, Nahum 1, and walks us through these dark times, Psalm 23. His message is one of hope, grace, and ultimately joy. Um, have you experienced um, just the the um, the happening of, man, I'm struggling, I'm maybe caught in some like despair, hopelessness, or whatever, and then I'm reminded of like the fact that he works in my weakness or whatever, and like does have you ever seen like hope from the word of God just kind of penetrate darkness and, and bring you to a different place? Yeah, uh, I have <laughs> for sure. I think, uh, the last couple of weeks, even just, uh, as I prepare for some of the 11th element talks, you right. know, so, so we have a, we have a short sermonette style, mm-hmm. um, uh, message before w- our workout on Saturdays. Yep. Okay. And, and the last few weeks I've, as I, as I try to prepare and think of like, God, what, what is it that you want me to, to come up with for this week? You mm-hmm. know, it has, it's turned to, well, what, what do you need to hear mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Logan? Right. And, right. Um, and then I would kind of go that direction and, and then, uh, dig into the scripture and sure. find out like, okay, God, like this is what, this is what I need to hear. Now, now let's put it into this, this message for, for the community of, mm. of 11th element. And so, <clears throat> you know, one of those things is, uh, recently was, uh, just this idea of, um, uh, like retaliation or, uh, f- like fairness, mm-hmm. you know, I, mm-hmm. I'd experienced a couple things, uh, myself and then one of a close friend of mine, things that just weren't fair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, man, that that's not fair. Like, that's right. not just, right. you know. Right, right. And uh, and then I like we started 
I started preparing the message and you know, the main thing that we talked about just this last Saturday was, dude, we don't want fair. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> like the scripture, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like we, we've received the most unfair thing yeah. in the history of the world mm-hmm. and we don't want fair. Right. Um, and so like I should probably stop trying to seek fairness in these other circles, you know, like, <laughs> which is going to decrease your bitterness, your resentment yeah. and lead to great mental health. Right. Cause yeah. it was like, really affecting me and, and like, not just, not just like, like me, like mentally, emotionally, like right. I was upset, right. you know? Right. But mm. yeah, the scripture, I mean, the scripture like turns that around, yeah. you know, the, the living word of God. So good. So good. Uh, number six here is practice gratitude. Uh, Thessalonians five, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So what does it look like for you to um, practice gratitude and, and, um, again, how has that affected some mental health things? Um, I guess a couple things, uh, you know, when, whenever I'm starting to pray, I'd like to follow the, another acronym, mm-hmm. um, ACTS, yeah. A-C-T-S. Come on. So adoration, yeah. confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And yeah. adoration is, is kind of showing gratitude. Like, right. like God, thank you. You know, it's, it is a little bit of thanks, but it's, 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 it's kind of calling out the things that God is doing in your life mm. or has done in your life and, and adoring him, showing gratitude for those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I try to, I try to do that kind of, if I'm, if I'm able to, to get in those like short one minute, one line mm-hmm. prayers, like, man, God, thanks for this. Thanks for that. Um, I try to, um, you know, after, after working out, I try to, to throw like a quick prayer in, like, mm-hmm. thank you for, for the ability to do this right type of thing like right. showing gratitude there um like our bodies are really cool mm. and we get to like do fun things with them yeah. and exercise like that's cool mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then uh the, the last piece of of showing gratitude is i think you know the family and the ministry type of thing like right. man i i feel just so uh blessed that i have the wife and baby that I have. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's almost, uh, yeah. I like, I can't show enough gratitude mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. the Lord for right. that blessing. Right. Um, and, and the ministry is something I never, ever, ever thought mm-hmm. I would be doing. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I guess, I guess as far as, as far as mental health, it's just kind of being intentional with identifying those things sure. in your life that you are blessed with and, and, trying to be intentional on like, you know, giving praise to the Lord. Absolutely. And I think there's a real, um, tangible benefit that comes from mindset Mm. and, um, just a mindset of gratitude versus a mindset of, um, just kind of like how bad it is all the time. That's not to neglect the reality of what we're going through, but I, I just feel like, thankfulness we're not only commanded to do it but i it just seems like there's such a great blessing again we take the focus off just kind of the immediacy of the situation and get to be reminded of god's goodness Mm. his graciousness just i'll read you something that that says here um practicing gratitude is one of the most effective ways of starving off bitterness and depression Mm. and uh yeah so it's that feeding feeding one or the other um and just you know um, we're going to move on here for sake of time, but well, real quick. Yeah, go. Um, the, the ants, mm-hmm. automatic negative thoughts. Yes. I feel like gratitude. Another good is a, acronym. another good acronym. Yeah. <laughs> so many. <laughs> yeah. We may uh, have to retitle this podcast. Yeah. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I feel like gratitude is, could be one of the like, um, best, uh, weapons against mm. ants. It's good. So, uh, you know, uh, we were we were gonna take a vacation up to my parents' house a few months ago, mm-hmm. and uh, the uh, the ants were just coming. Like, yeah. Yeah. and you know, it's Quinn. Like, Quinn's gonna hates the car. And right. you know, what if she doesn't sleep at night? Right. And like, automatic negative thought, like over and over and over. Yeah. But man, like, let's like, what if I switched the mindset, like mm-hmm. you said, and and I was. And I was showing gratitude. I was grateful for the opportunity to like be with family, right? And like enjoy, 
you know, some vacation time, like away from the grind yeah. and, yeah. you know, uninterrupted time with Quint, like sure. that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, and, and that can, I think, be a great, a great tool um, in, in defeating the ants. Absolutely. Yeah. I know even in my experience, as I walk through just different triggers um, that are pulled as, you know, which can pull me into anxious loops and things like that, um, you know, practicing gratitude, even in the midst of those, like, mm-hmm. Jesus, thank you that I need you in this moment. Mm-hmm. Thank you for this training. Um, just breathing out those prayers sometime um, to the Lord, uh, which is even has been occurring on this show to just keep it real. Right. And, and so, yeah, remember, this is good news for those who struggle. <laughs> um, those are, those are, I think, are game shifters. And I, my mentor, you know, uh, Pastor Dan Myers has, has been really big on me and um, encouraging me to be a person of, of gratitude. Mm. And um, yeah, I think it helps to, really that, that um, it, is a, it is something that can starve off some of the things that, that end up drowning us. Hey, so we're at number seven, um, exercise regularly. Um, do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and that the, God's spirit dwells in your midst? First Corinthians 3.16. So talk to us, what does your rhythm of exercise look like? And now mind you, you are a CrossFit coach, like certified and, right. and trained. So temper, temper may be what Logan's going to say, but like, and, and how do you think it affects your mental health? So, I mean, there's, there's some science, I guess, in there somewhere mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about endorphins and things like that. Um, I don't know enough to, uh, to really go into that, but, but you know, it's there. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. when you exercise, you know, your body releases endorphins and, and that's a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Like, so there's, <clears throat> there's that side of it for sure. Um, but I think there's, um, ca- kind of like I was talking before, I, I think there's another aspect to it that's maybe less scientific, <laughs> but, but when we're getting to like use our, our bodies in like these really cool ways mm-hmm. to, to exercise and, and get stronger or more, you know, more fit, mm-hmm. healthier, mm-hmm. just that in general is like a, is like a kind of a spiritual experience. Right. Um, because I think of, of us being created in the image of God, um, there's, there's like a natural, uh, as we take care of that image of God, mm. like there's a natural, mm. Hey, like this is a good thing. Right. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, my rhythms, I, I typically I'm, I'm going to exercise six times a week. Okay. Uh, some days I take off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that includes, you know, sometimes that includes jumping in with some coaching with a class or whatever, but, right. um, and some days are more heavy mm-hmm. exercise than others, but um, but it's usually six days. Mm-hmm. Um, and can you feel it? Like when you get off your rhythm of exercise, uh-huh. what is that like? Oh my gosh. I mean, so, so you can, you can feel your body can feel it if you need to take some extra rest. Like that's right. the thing. But, um, but man, if I'm, if I'm off my rhythm, say I'm, I'm out four or five, day, like if I have a cold, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and I can't get into the gym for, you know, three, four five days, uh, I feel like it's months and right. I'm like, man, I like, well, Kind of like we were saying before, you yeah. as you create those rhythms and habits, when you don't have them, there's like that that starving sure. hunger, you know. Sure. Same as spending time with the Lord, right? <laughs> you know, like right. when you have that habit, and you don't do it, right? You you crave it, right? Um, and the same is true for exercise. Mm. Um, yeah. And even you know, like you said, um, just on the mental health side of things, the endorphins that are released, it's almost like God's created us mm-hmm. with a. Uh, help you in your gladness, right. you know, um, you know, tool, if you will, and exercise helps to release those, obviously. And so when we're not exercising regularly, even it doesn't have to be six times a week, it could be three times a week, it could be walking, it could be whatever, like be creative. But like, um, you know, I think movement is so big uh, for us, both in the release of those endorphins, which are going to fight against some of the, the just the, the despair that uh, that may come upon us and, and just create more of more of a glad uh, presence, um, but just the you know um, the image of God. It just seems like the movement is really part of kind of how we were, we were created, and uh, when we step into that, um, I think there's a real effect. Um, just like the eating, like we so, sometimes I, I just don't want to um, miss the very practical nature of eating right. <laughs> and exercising mm-hmm. and how that's going to affect our, our mental health. Um, big, big time. It's a big deal. It it's, is. 
yeah, like it's a big, <laughs> we can talk about tools and help and all those other things, but those are real, real steps. I think yeah, to, to helping absolutely, yourself. Absolutely. Um, so the next one is practice your spiritual gifts. Um, and references first Peter four, each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And so what does it look like for you to practice your spiritual gifts and how do you think it helps maintain good mental health? Mm. So I think in general, when we are practicing our spiritual gifts, there's a, there's a sense of, um, like fulfillment there maybe, Mm. uh, where we are leaning into the things God has called us into. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's almost like we are like, we're firing on all cylinders or, or we're working at maximum capacity, Mm -hmm. like type Mm -hmm. of thing. So, you know, if, if we're, if we're struggling, uh, in things that we're not really called to or gifted with, mm-hmm. like you can feel that for yeah. sure. You can feel this like sense of, um, dragging along, like can't really sure. get through it. Um, but yeah, when you're, when you're leaning into what God's called you to lean into, um, there's like a, like, like a well-oiled machine, yeah. like we're moving good. We're doing, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Um, and so for me, you know, I, I think, uh, I think part of that is, is 11th element. It's, mm-hmm. it's discipling people. Um, right. it's, it's meeting with guys. It's helping, helping people walk through life a little bit and introducing them to, uh, the God of scripture mm-hmm. and, and Jesus and how, when I mean, we talk about it on Sunday, how Jesus changes everything mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. like that, that f- it fills me up yeah. a little bit. Right? right. It's like when we talk about like the you know, the buckets yeah. of like sure. the, the outpouring and the input, right. like what fills, what fills your bucket is I think practicing your spiritual gift. Sure. Sure. Love that. And, um, you know, the, the article also references like the, the idea that, um, there's, there's purpose when you, you're reminded of that, uh, you have a, you have a purpose here. And I think sometimes as we think about mental health, the loss of, of our purpose is, mm-hmm. is a real uh, danger. And so just being reminded as you practice your spiritual gift, like, Hey, I was created like for, for this and for God's glory here. And man, I have purpose <laughs> and, uh, like I matter. And I don't know, I, I feel like there's, I, I would agree with, with what they're saying, you know, here yeah. as well and practicing that. Um, the next one, number nine is rest, rest. What is a, what is a rhythm of rest look like for Logan in his, in his young family church growing situation and how do you think that helps your mental health uh rest is hard Mm -hmm. rest is real hard um you know sunday is sabbath for us for for the family Mm -hmm. um but it's also it also ends up becoming uh, you know seminary deadline day okay school stuff um it 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 can turn into you know extra project day around the house Mm -hmm. it can um it can be really hard to to really settle into the rest Mm -hmm. you know that like of of the sabbath right um so uh yeah i mean for for us it's it's sunday but it's tough it's Mm -hmm. hard and what is um when you when you are experiencing a Sabbath and you are setting aside that that twenty four if you don't know what a Sabbath is a twenty four hour dedicated time for rest refreshment recreation if that's refreshing to you you know like Logan what happens when you when you do lean into that like what are some of the good differences that you experience when you're when you're really observing that yeah I mean you you feel the the refreshed feeling I mm-hmm. think there's there's just this um, the, the filling of the bucket that we mm-hmm. kind of talked about too. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, when, when you are able to kind of disconnect, um, from, from the grind, the regular routine, um, is, is for us when, when we feel that, um, that filling up of energy mm-hmm. that it's, it's, it's funny. I think, I think it's easier to identify when you don't have the rest, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The negative signs yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah for like, sure. Uh, than it is because I think we probably more often live in a state of not enough rest right. than right. we do restful. Yeah. <laughs> and how many hours are you trying to sleep a night? 
uh, trying to get it. Well, it depends. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to get seven to eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes it's a little less. Right. But. Right. And I know that, um, you know, that you've encouraged me on, mm. on sleeping more and, and just the benefits of that, um, you know, uh, just overall throughout your day and, and just how, how critical that is. And, and actually the, the dangers of that, you know, referenced me to a few Ted talks there. And, you know, I mean, we were created to rest just like we were created to work and we were created to serve. So when we're doing what we were created to do, then we're just going to work better. Like that's, you know, that's, it's a practical understanding. And, and then when we're, when we're robbing that rest, whether it's like from not enough sleep or it's by not, you know, um, celebrating a Sabbath that God wants us to celebrate, it's, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to take a toll on our mental health. Um, and I, I think one of the things for me, when I, uh, Sabbath, I take, I take a Sabbath on Monday is, um, like I'm, I'm just reminded of things like, like like God's, God's got this, like we got, and like we've got this, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I, you can kind of forget, I think it's Vince Lombardi that says, uh, fatigue makes cowards of us all. And, uh, so, uh, uh just the courage that comes from resting um, yeah. is important. So I think, uh, I think a helpful analogy going back to the fitness side of things, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you, if you work out seven days a week and you mm -hmm. never give yourself the rest, it might seem as though you are progressing on your fitness journey. Right. But I think the reality is that you're probably doing more damage than good. Yeah. Right. Your body, yeah. your body needs to recover in right. order to perform well in, in the gym. Right. And I mean that, I think it's gotta be the same mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, absolutely. And physically. Absolutely. You know, and I think even, even taking rest in the midst of the day, you mm -hmm. know, I think a Sabbath, a 24 hour Sabbath helps to set up taking mini Sabbaths throughout the day. So you, you'll, you'll probably be, if you're willing to rest for a 24 hour period and re again, rest can look different for different people. You know, it, it could be recreation. It could include exercise. It could include the movie. You know, it's not just like eyes closed <laughs> and somebody's watching your kids, right. you know, but, um, it seems as though, um, if you're able to celebrate a Sabbath on a regular basis, then you become, you, you enter into more of like a Sabbath type lifestyle throughout the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. as it was informed by some a book that I read years ago, can't remember the name of it, but basically I'll probably be more likely to take a prayer walk Tuesday at whatever time. If, if I'm, if my body's used to a stop and then I, then when I start again, I realize like God still has this, <laughs> like, like it all didn't fall apart because I worked less mm -hmm. and rested. So final one is, is see a doctor. Um, Proverbs 11, for lack of guidance, a, na uh, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. So what, what are kind of your thoughts about like, you know, the, these are all super practical every day for everyone. Um, but is there, is there a time when seeing a doctor and kind of taking like a next step into some, some medical, you know, help, um, is, is something that, uh, you know, you, you've seen to be helpful. What's your thought on people who maybe need to take that next step? Yeah, man. I, you know, I think, um, I think it's been, it's been taboo for so long, mm -hmm. right? Like, Oh, you know, doctors for mental health, like, right. Um, so for so long it's been, well, you just need to either trust God more right. or pray more right. or like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. get over it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I, from my experience anyways, I, I think that, that there absolutely can come a time mm -hmm. where, where that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Like you need to, mm -hmm. you, you absolutely need to supplement your, the other nine things on this Ooh, list. Right. Um, right. You know, with, with some sort of, um, medical, you know, professional. Absolutely. Um, and so it, maybe it's gone from like taboo to no medicine to now sometimes it's like, well, mm. I'm just immediately going to go get, mm. right. You know, some pills. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yep. but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think that it, it absolutely can, can be a supplement mm -hmm. to, you know, these other nine right and other practices. Well, and as Sam shared, you know, uh, this weekend it, for, for the believer, that's not where we, that's not our first step. It's not mm -hmm. where we necessarily start. We, you know, we start in like looking at our rhythms, inviting the Lord into this and things like that. And, and as we do that, I, it seems like 
you know, there, there's the potential for even more clarity as to when that is a, like a, a good next step. Mm-hmm. And so we're dealing with root issues as we seek the Lord and all these things. But then also, like, you know, the scripture says, many counselors. And um, that's not something to be ashamed of or have any stigma about. That's, that's just wise and loving to ourselves and those around us mm-hmm. um, for us to avail ourselves to help in, in areas that maybe we've never looked before. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, it's good to hear that. And I hope if you're, if you're um, out there and you're listening, um, you're hearing that there is certainly um, a time and place when, when that's, that really needs to be a, a next step for us. And, uh, and in, in, in today's um, show, we, uh, again, I, I hope that you were able to just kind of catch a vision for what everyday mental health looks like for all of us, no matter where we might be in our in our life situation. And so, um, Logan, it's been super awesome, you know, kind of being with you today and getting to hear you in this context. Man, any last word, any final comment you want before we close out? Um, I mean, thanks for thanks for having me. It's yeah, been fun. My pleasure. Um, definitely enjoyed this. Uh, I guess the last thing I would say: mm-hmm. get a moleskin. Okay. <laughs> Check. Get a sharpie pen. Don't or, sh- or two, because you might lose the first one. Don't share it, right? Don't share it. Okay. It's your Sharpie pen. Okay. And it's your moleskin journal. Boundaries. Good. Um, <laughs> pray. Yeah. Read the scripture. Yeah. Write your stuff down. Right. Um, I think that'll that'll help a lot. It's awesome. a big, big deal. Awesome. And, and even, thank you for sharing that. And even, you know, we started the show by talking about rhythms. Mm. And um, the, everything that Logan said is true and right. But if they don't become rhythms in your life that are actually like intentionalized as to when they're going to happen and how they're going to happen, then I think it's easy for them to slip away and and we can end up in the same cul-de-sac and wonder why there's no change. Um, and so a rhythms and, and like the, these provide like a systematic approach to really experiencing, I think, some pretty awesome mental health. So yep. Logan, thank you. The Lord bless you and Kirsten and Quinn, Olympic Element, your family. And uh, thanks for being with us on the show. Um, so that's our episode uh, for today. I hope that you guys join us next week. Uh, love being with y'all. Love you guys. Have an awesome, awesome week. And until next time, be well. Thank you. <laughs>